All right. Yeah. Okay, Shalom Aleichem, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to say that if I start to slur, it's only because in Israel, at the moment now, it's like uh, 20 to 5 in the morning. And uh, <laughs> I only had four hours sleep last night, so I'm going to try my best over here. Uh, for those of you who are completely unaware, um, um, every Thursday night, NCSY sponsors uh, this online Chabura, uh, where basically we get to learn, we're learning now Masech Shabbos. Uh, the online Chabura did almost 250 shurim on Masech Brachos. And what we try and do every week is to try and relive the glory days of Yeshiva, a little bit of Lambdas, a little bit of Halacha, and at the end, a little bit of Machshava as well. I, I'm very into, as you all know, into teaching Machshava, so it gives a chance especially with brachas and Shabbos, it's very machshava orientated to add a little bit of things to think about over Shabbos. And this particular sugi that I want to do today is um, in honor of my dear friend, Rabbi Eitan Katz, who I love dearly, and I want to continue to love him dearly. So hopefully by the time I finish this, this presentation over here, I hope everything's gonna work out just fine. Uh, the title of the shir is called Relief Missions. Um, what's the mitzvah? Uh, we all know that Reverend Katz uh, runs, how many missions are we doing this year? 500? 45. It, it feels like 500. It feels like 500. Okay, it feels like 500. And uh, I almost went with him to, to Puerto Rico. Uh, unfortunately, Akash Baruch who decided that uh, from, I should break my arm over here, so it never actually <laughs> happens. Um, but at least if I can't be in Puerto Rico, we can learn together the terror of what it means to do chesed in Puerto Rico. I want to just begin with a quick story um, about the Neidah Yehuda. It's a well-known story. The Neidah Yehuda was the Rav in Prague uh, 300, 350 years ago. And uh, when he was there, on uh, one day he's walking down the street and he sees a little boy, a little Christian boy crying. And he asks the boy, what's wrong? He says, I'm going home to get a whipping. He says, what happens? He says, my father's the baker. And, um, and uh, some kids came along and tipped over the car and they stole all my, uh, my father's baked goods. And instead of coming home with money, I'm coming home with nothing. And whenever that happens, my father gives me a whipping. So this little boy, eight-year-old boy, is terrified he's gonna get whipped by his father. And the native Yehuda asked him a simple question, how much money would you have made today? So he said, whatever it was, whatever it was. So the native Yehuda went into his pocket, took it out, gave him the money, and said everything's fine. Fast forward 10 years, and it is the middle of the festival of Pesach. It is Cholomar Pesach. He gets in the door, a young adult walks in. Uh, the native who does not recognize him. It's a guy, a non-Jew. And the, by the way, it's completely dark over here. Is that okay? Is this, um, is there a light? There's no light. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know what the settings are. It's just, oh, no, the green light is on. Oh yeah, it is on. That's fine? Yeah. Okay, and um, this guy comes along and says, um, hi, my name is Stefan, as they're always called, and you don't remember me, but I will never forget you. 10 years ago, um, you gave me the money that I needed to save myself from a whipping, and now I wanna pay you back by telling you that my father, who is the chief baker of the city, he's a vicious anti-Semite, and he has this, uh, this plan that all the bakers on um, the last night of Pesach so the custom was that the Jews would buy that night, they would buy uh, from the local bakery, from the non-Jewish bakery, and they were gonna poison the, the breads. It's when they're gonna poison the breads and they wanted to cause a lot of Jews to die from poisoning. So I'm giving you a warning right up front that uh, this is what's gonna happen and uh, you should do something about it. And he disappears. The native who thinks of what to do. And for whatever, politically, it did not make any sense that he would go and tell people don't buy from the bakers, it would be too much of a raucous. What he did was, is that he went to the shul and he made an announcement and said, I, I've gone over the calculation, we have our dates wrong, and really we need to have an extra day of Yom Tov. <laughs> he came out with an extra day of Yom Tov. Everyone thought the Nodi would have gone crazy, but you don't argue with the God of Hador. Uh, that night, when Pesach should have ended, Nobody was buying bread because they thought it was still Pesach. Uh, the bakers complained to the police that there was a boycott. The police went to the Neidi Behuda and asked him what's happened, and he says, uh, bring one of your dogs to eat the breads and see what happens. 
The dogs ate the bread, they died. They realized what was happening. Of course, the police arrested the bakers. Uh, the Jews understood that whatever happened, happened for a reason that a Baruch wanted to save the Jews, and they all lived happily ever after. Except that we end up with a story where we see Behedja, we see that the Knight of Yehuda was giving Stalker, was taking care of a non-Jewish child. And uh, we would all say this is an act of chesed, but we're going to learn together in a few minutes that chesed is not exactly the proper definition of what's going on over here. And the whole idea of doing chesed with non-Jews needs to be understood of what exactly is the getter. So I want to begin with Mesech Shabbos, because that's the Mesech that we're learning together. The Gemara in Shabbos of Yud Beis brings down the following words. And I quote, once I put my reading glasses on, I quote the following thing. Um, if you go and visit a sick person, and we're talking about on Shabbos, so you're doing the mitzvah b'kachol on Shabbos, Aimer, Shabbos himelizayk, Shabbos is a time when you refrain from crying out to God, but the refuah will come, come very quickly. So Rashi explains, Shabbos himelizayk, tzarech laharchiv daitam, b'tanchumim shleitzdaru. A person should be very careful to be marked the das of the people who are suffering, that they shouldn't uh, be mitzvah on Shabbos. And, uh, and the mitzvah says, uh, the Gemara brings out, the opening mitzvah is that when you come on Shabbos, you see somebody who is sick, you just say Shabbos is the one that will bring the rufuah and will bring, will bring it quickly. Then there's other opinions. Shabbos has the power to heal. Rabbi Yehuda Eimeh, Hamokim Yerachim Olecha Ba'al Choli Yisrael. This sounds very similar to what you say to the Avelim. Rabbi Yehuda Eimeh, Hamokim Yerachim Besei Choli Yisrael, which is even more like what we say for the Avelim. And then I want you to listen to this one. This is the last offering of what to say to somebody on Shabbos when you see that they're sick. You go into them and you say the word Shalom. Beknisasa Eimeh Shalom. So Shivna, Ish Yerushalayim says, when you go in, you say the word Shalom. And when you leave the sick person, you say, Shabbos Himalizaik, Rufua Krovalavai, the Rachmav Marubim, Hashem's mercy is abundant, the uh, Shivtai Bishalom, and keeping Shabbos should be Bishalom. So you go in and you say the word Shalom, and you come out and you say the word Shalom. So I'm just reading this Gemara over here, and there's a lot of obvious questions that comes out over here. The most obvious of all is for some reason, when you do Bikacholim during the week, you do regular Bikacholim. When you do Bikacholim on Shabbos, so you don't do the regular Bikacholim, uh, you give a person a bracha, you say that uh, we don't cry out to God on Shabbos because Shabbos you're not allowed to be sad, and don't worry, the refuah is coming very, very quickly. So for some reason, Shabbos is intrinsically different. I want to point out to you that uh, I had on um, this Rosh Hashanah, uh, somebody came up to me. I was still wearing a sling on Rosh Hashanah. I was looking very sickly. Somebody came and says, Ah, Yom Tov Himalizok. That's what he said to me. So I said, I never heard any, I never heard such a Nusach, Yom Tov Himalizok. I didn't know such a thing exists. So he said to me, No, it's printed in the Siddur. Um, I felt that Api um, Machshava, what I'm about to share with you now, I felt that there's no such thing as Yom Tov Himalizok. I just know there's the Shabbos Himalizok. It's in the Siddur. Well, it's, written, it's published in the Siddur, right? I have over here the Siddur of the Tzvilas Dabr of the Aderes. He was the Rav Yushalayim, um, whatever, 100 years ago. He said that, that Yom Tov Himalizak is a mistake. You should leave the original Nusuk of Shabbos Himalizak, and he doesn't explain why. We do know, one thing we know for a fact is that you're not allowed to be sad on Yom Tov. There's a mitzvah of Simcha on Yom Tov, so there's no question about it that the idea that you cannot express Tsar on Yom Tov is 100% uh, true. But what I wanted to argue, which is what it's going to be the thesis that I'm going to present in a few minutes, is that the second half of the statement is that the fact that we're saying this on Shabbos, Shabbos has the power to heal, and uh, we don't see that Yom Tov has the power to heal. Um, the Tzitz Eliezer, I found this out by chance, the Tzitz Eliezer says, that the reason why Shabbos is the power to heal is because since you are being giving cover to Shabbos, you're giving cover to Shabbos by not crying on Shabbos itself, so Shabbos itself, so to speak, pays you back by giving you healing. So Lechera, that would apply to Yom Tov. 
but, um, but uh, it's, it's a bigger, bigger it's a chiddush that a tzitzel yezah says. The pashas is, is that the Gemara is teaching us that Shabbos has within it the power to heal. And you see from this man, Shivna Ishu Shalayim, that however you were going to learn that Shabbos has the power to heal, somehow it's connected to this magical world, Shalom. Because he says, you come into a person that's sick, you say Shalom. Then you say the Nusach, that uh, Shabbos is going to heal you, and then you leave and say that by resting on Shabbos, it brings you to Shalom. Shalom somehow is the magical world that brings you to the world of healing. What's going on behind the scenes? So I want to share with you in a few moments my idea. You have to say Yom Tov Yom Lizek. The what? There's two components. Yom Tov Yom Lizek means you're not allowed to cry out on Yom Tov, right? Correct. And Rufu Kravalavi means you're asking for Rufu. Well, the Rufu Kravalavi is generally, the Pasha is the Brafa, but the way I understand it, Rufu Kravalavi is because it's Shabbos. Right, but the Yom Tov, are you saying that you're allowed to cry out on Yom Tov? No. But then you can still say the terminology of Yom Tov Yom Lizek means we're not allowed to cry out on Yom Tov. Correct. <laughs> but they're, 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 but they're, what about the second half of the Nusach? Right. Does, does Yom Tov have a refuel? Is there in Yom Tov a refuel for the love? Well, and Yom, Yom Tov doesn't have the same restrictions about crying out. We do, we do the Buddha Shalom at the Gilomidas. We do the, the Buddha Shalom. No, we don't. In only, only in Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is a third category. In, in Duch, no. In Duchning, we do. We, we, we say the Yiratzon, or we do. We do say a, a Rebarna Shalom after, after you come on Okay, so again, 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 I, I don't want to get into details because it, Shabbos also is filled with trinas and bakoshes and the tulips everywhere. Like whatever it is, but, uh, it, it, you'll see all over the place. It's, these things are very nuanced. Okay. I just want to point out one thing and one thing only. What matters to me from this whole Gemara is that there's somehow rather Shabbos changes when we talk about refuah, and it seems to be that the key word over here is Shalom. The what? Oh, okay, so we're going to get to that, okay? Rabbi Fried, don't jump the gun, okay? La'at, la'at, everything has to go step by step. And I wanted to share with you that with all my sicknesses that's going on over here, so I got to learn a little bit of the sugya, so some Hasid Shakai came up to me and said to me that the Bells of Rebbe used to say, I asked him which Bells of Rebbe, he said, Rab Aaron rebels. Rab Aaron mm-hmm. rebels said that he had a Hasid twist on the phrase. Shabbos, he milizayk, and Shabbos, you refrain from, from asking a Kurdish Baruch for healing. Or Rafua Krova Lavai, what does Krova Lavai mean? It's earlier on in the Davani. Says the Rabbi Mibels, that normally during the week we say a Baruch for Rafa'inu. We say a Baruch for Rafa'inu. So in Rafa'inu, you ask a Kurdish Baruch to heal the sick. On Shabbos, there's no Rafa'inu, but instead, Krova Lavai means that in the second Baruch of the Shon Esrei, we say, um, mm-hmm. In those words, mm-hmm. you say, Akash Baruch is Rafi Cholim, so it's, it's, it's Yeshua, it's Kroi Velavai, it's earlier on in the davening. That's what Ma'ar Mabel said. So I said, that's a very cute bar, but it's, 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 it's a shtick because what we say in the second bracha is not a bakash, it's a praise. It's a shevach to Kaddish Baruch Hu. Say it during the weekday too? You say it during the weekday too. All right? So if Aaron Rebels is obviously saying something very deep, and I want to share, once I bring out my idea, that uh, there's something incredible, actually incredible, Oymek, in the words of Aaron Rebels. It's not just like a chasidish, a cute little thing, refuah krovolavai, uh, because we already ask Kaddish Baruch Hu, by giving him a shevach, we already say those words, the roifei uh, cholim. Just one more point, thing I want to point out is that, um, is that uh, Bikr Cholim, this whole parish, is, is, he says, one of the <coughs> things that we say, we say, Shar Yisrael. This whole sugya is very obviously only talking about Jews. This whole sugya, Bikr Cholim, is talking about Yidin. That's why we bring uh, a possible Nusach that you say, Besoch Shar Cholim Yisrael, together with other uh, Cholim of Yisrael. Uh, you go to the Chumash and Every single place in the Chumash that talks about the mitzvah of, uh, of chesed or the mitzvah of taking care of another person, it always says achicha. It's always talking about your brothers. There is no, as far as I know, right, there's no parsha in the Chumash that talks about chesed with non Jews. Um, I did a, a, a quick preview of the Tamer Dvarah. The Tamer Dvarah talks about going in Hashem's ways. Again and again and again throughout the Sefer, he's talking about Jews. He doesn't mention 
going in its ways and taking care of non-Jews. It just doesn't, doesn't appear in the Sefer. So for some reason, there's a huge gap between the way we do chesed with, um, with Jews and, as we're going to see in, in a moment, the way we talk about chesed when we're discussing the case of non-Jews. Agav Orcha, it's interesting to notice, every time we go to the bathroom, we say, Reife kol basa o makli lasse. So Kosh Baruch gives refuah to both Jew and non-Jew alike. But when it comes to tefillah, we always say, Reife chayle ame Yisrael. As if the concept of refuah is unique and special the way it works with Kla Yisrael. So, for those of you just joining us now, a quick summary. Basically, all I'm saying to you is the following thing. The bottom line is, we have a part, we have a suga in the Gemara and Bracha stuff, Gemara and Shabbos Yod Beis, that talks about Bikacholim. In the Gemara, we see very clearly, Shabbos has a unique power to heal. It seems to be that the key to understanding how it heals is the word Shalom, because Shalom, basically, Rav Shivna Ish Yerushalayim, Rav Shivna Ish Yerushalayim comes along and says, I will say the standard Nusach, but I will come in saying Shalom, and I will leave saying the word Shalom, and that's all he seems to be adding. Okay, so um, 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 what I want to do is, is to read to you. Where am I? Hold on. Yeah, is to read to you the the Gemara of Bodezerot of Chaf Hamid Aleph. Um, I just wanted to say this Gemara over here. It's an awkward Gemara to talk about publicly because it talks about the, what's called the mitzvah of Le Sukhane. Le Sukhane, let me just read you the Gemara. The Gemara says, it's a, it quotes a Pasuk in Devarim, Perik Zayim, Pasuk Beis, Le Tichris Lehem Bris, Le You're not allowed to make a bris with the seven, with the seven, uh, with the seven uh, Amimim, and you should not show them compassion. So you are forbidden to show compassion to the seven tribes. It says Rashi, Avil Bechinam also literally Shumatana. So the Gemara goes on to say three halachas that we learn from Le Sukhane. Um, only one of them is relevant to the Shir. One of them is you're not allowed to sell them land. The other one is that we shouldn't show them chain, which seems to imply that you're not allowed to compliment them. And the third, which we certainly cannot talk about publicly, and the third and final thing is that you should not show them favor, which means, seems to imply that you should not uh, give them any chesed. Says Rashi, You're not allowed to give a non-Jew any form of gift. So you read the Gemara in, in Avodah Zorah. If you stop there, it's highly awkward. You're not allowed to give a non-Jew a gift. Tasis comes along and says, you should know. Says Teisvis, answering your question, he says, So Teisvis brings down, and the other Roshani basically concur, he says that this particular aspect about giving gifts, he said there's no logic to distinguish between the seven nations and the other nations. So Teisvis understands that the mitzvah of Lo Suchanim is a flat halacha across to anyone that's over the Vodah Zara. Uh, what is possible is to argue uh, a bunch of things okay, where you can mitigate it by saying, number one, um, it's only talking about Ode de So if you have non-Jews today who are not Ode de it's not a problem at all. Um, it doesn't work in Puerto Rico uh, or Catholics, um, unless you want to say, which is a, already a tangent on a tangent, that Shituf is not already not a problem of Ode anymore because they don't just hold they hold that anyone that knows the quote from American Pie, that's right, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So it's, it's, uh, it's a whole, whole mishpacha over there. So that's already one way to mitigate it. You should also be aware that uh, there's a, a, a Me'iri, um, the, the Roshanim, first of all, the Achroinim did not see the Me'iri, the early Achroinim did not see this Me'iri, but there's a very uh, well-quoted Me'iri from the later Deiris, that the Me'iri says that even when we're talking about Oida Vodazara, we're not talking about the ones who are, uh, the ones who are, in, in his words, the ones who are um, B'nai Tarbos. I've gotten the exact Russian that he uses over here, but the Meiri says that um, uh, B'nai Bali Nimusim, those are the words he used, Bali Nimusim. So that means that um, the, the, the Meiri was, uh, he lived in Provence with the, with, the, with the French kings over there, and he said people who are educated and who, are, who, who live in a um, sophisticated <coughs> mannerism so this halacha would not apply. Wow. So subjective. 
Yeah, it's just a little bit, it's a little bit, but I'm just trying to say that the sugi of Lei is like, I know Rabbi Fried has to deal with Amir Laakam questions, right? People live in communities with non-Jews, we sometimes we have to go out of our way to try and find leniencies. Um, because just, just for, it's just, it's, it's, it's impossibly hard to, to, to run a community without looking for leniencies and these kind of things. Am I, am I right? Speak a louder. What the what? <coughs> the cleaning lady or something like that that's going to enhance our future. Or, you know, you have to find an amapola. Oh, oh. Okay, so this is the. Let me give you a a a a, 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 a quote from the Sefer Chinuch. This thing of Leisachane, somehow or other, how do we bypass it? So the the Rishonim bring down over here that Leisachane is you're not allowed to show them favor unless you will somehow get a benefit out of it. And this word benefit is very broad. There's a whole bunch of examples of what a benefit means over here. The Sefer Chinuch, over here on Lei he says, what's the purpose of this mitzvah? What's the time of mitzvah of Lei Sechani? He says, You're not allowed to get close to the non-Jew, right? To run after their love. I don't want to go into this, but there's an interesting tshuva uh, from Rav Moshe Feinstein, uh, whether you're allowed to uh, make a banquet for a, uh, and bring a non-Jew as your, uh, what's, what's it called again in your language? The keynote, the honorary speaker, or the honorary honorary, because, you, uh, because you're not allowed to bring one, can you bring one in if you think that by bringing him in that you'll, you'll make more money for your mosad, right? So he, said that, so he writes over there, it's possible, that there's a siba, that you're doing it, so it's good for your motive, so therefore it's permitted, but it's a double mechor. Those are the words that he uses. It's certainly not a thing that, you, that is considered a worthwhile form of doing fundraising. I'm not so sure how popular that is as well. Um, but he says, we're worried, if you pursue their love, you want to get close to them, so then you start learning from their ways. However, continues the Sefer Echenuch, he says, nevertheless, it becomes permitted to sheyimtza shevach yeser ma'oid la emunasenu. If somehow or other the Jews come out looking good from this whole thing, so then leisachanim has an override. So an example would be is that um, we don't want to do this because we're looking for your friendship. We want to do this because we want to make a kiddush Hashem. So the Israeli government every single time there's a disaster everywhere. So the BBC will never report it, okay? No, no will CNN. Fox News for some reason will. But everyone else, they, they, no one will know about it. Israel's, whenever there's a problem, Israel sends help. Why? Because that's what Jews do, okay? So we're not doing, we don't need your friendship. They just helped out in Turkey. That's why I said it bothered me to no end. There were the fires in Turkey. So, so they mentioned, the BBC mentioned that, that, that uh, the England sent and France sent and Germany said the biggest contingency of help came from Israel to the Turkish who are basically our enemies. So that's what Jews do. We don't do it because we want to be your friends. We do this because that's what we do. We, we care about the nations of the world. Are you suggesting that, that when the government sends help, it's motivated by chesed and not by PR? Could be. The PR is also it's called a siva. Us. PR could be also a siva culture. It could be, uh, and, and the, the real, real it truth is, the real truth, truth is, is that, uh, is that, uh, is that I think the two go together. And the Hanami, you're right, it's a PR stunt. But it, 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 if you were to just a PR stunt, the Jews, they do it in places where they get nothing out of it as well. They'll do it in Costa Rica, or in Puerto Rico, or so places like that. So, someone does something that they could be accused of doing non-altruistically because it just makes them feel good to do it. Is that enough of a benefit to say that it should be allowed? Oh. So, so, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, well, not, not Israel, necessarily, I, 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 I always feel great. I mean, I'm sure you all know what it's like when you say, okay, when I come to, to, to America, you see the guy by the traffic lights, right? War veteran, whatever it is. I always feel good giving them something. I feel good, especially, you know, you, you let, make sure that they see your keeper. The question is, okay, let's say they don't know that you're Jewish. Uh, then it could really, and it, just to give them for no reason, so we don't know yet what the heter is to do chesed. But for sure, when you're making Kedush Hashem, you feel good and they feel good, so that would, that would not be a problem. I had, I had a Misa when I was in Newark. I, I came from an NCSY Shabbaton, and this Pakistani guy comes up to me and says to me, can you give me money to get to Manhattan? 
right? So, so it's a funny thing. I, I, I asked him how much he needs. So he said, I don't know, I think he said uh, $8.50, right? So I, I gave him 10 bucks. I said, I said, good luck. So you know, he turns around to me, he said to me, I just want you to know something. He said to me, I've been asking people now for the last hour, no one would give me the money. He says, but, uh, but it's an interesting thing. You gave me the money and I see you're Jewish. He says, the last time I had this problem, I didn't have money to get to town. The only person that gave me was a Jew as well. I grew up in Pakistan, and in the Madras in Pakistan, they told me the Jews are the devils. I'm going to go around and telling people that it's not that way, that you guys take care of us. So it, it happened to me. The story happened to me. So of course, I felt like a million dollars after it. I mean, look at a little Kiddush Hashem thing over here. How do you get the JFK tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Um, so, <laughs> you see, that's goofa. That's goofa. Chelik of the mitzvah. It's, it's no longer chinam, so that's not the mitzvah. Okay, did just the end where my preacher said. He said that the word override is not exactly the, the more the more technically correct way of understanding it. right? You shouldn't show them favor. It comes to the word chinam for no reason, just because except for that you want to show them love. But at the moment that there is a reason, I just also have the, the, the Shuta Rashba in Chelek Aleph Halacha Ches. Also, Matnas Chinam, Avu Lesiba Moteris. The Rashba uses the word Siba, right? So, so in Iraq, Matnas Chinam, to give them for no reason whatsoever, that would be forbidden. So I want to say right, right up front, okay? If I would stop the share right now, so the most obvious Siba that we do with NCSY um, relief missions, and I, I feel, who am I to speak in front of Rabbi Katz, who could probably spend the next 10 hours telling us stories, is that the Siba culture of doing relief missions is that our kids that come back from that are changed people. And not only that, the, the parents are changing, the bonding between father and child is changing. It's the most incredible care of tool. Today, not every kid is gonna come and uh, come to Eretz Yisrael. Not everyone can we, can we bring into learning. They go out, they do chesed, a Jew has chesed in their dumb, right, to go and care about people. It's fun, it's glamorous, it's exciting. And somehow or other, you can bring in uh, a little terror, you bring in rabbis from Eretz Yisrael to be part of the team. And before you know it, right, before you know it, okay, you have made an impact on the child. So that would be the ultimate, most powerful siba. That alone would be an override for Lesechim. Not, nothing, wouldn't it all work? Because? Because number one, <coughs> I knew I shouldn't have invited Rabbi Fried. So, okay, so, so, so I've justified, I've justified for sure the achrayas of the people who are involved in arranging this thing. But for the actual Jewish boys and girls that are going there, so you're saying that they're not going full care of, right? But uh, they, they, I can for sure testify that every single one of them, without exception, comes out feeling that they've given much more than they've taken. Excuse me, they've taken much more than they've given. The 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 that I mentioned to you beforehand um, is that a, any siba kolshi that doesn't come from Ava, if you're giving to them because you want to come back with a Puerto Rican girlfriend. I know it doesn't sound nice to say it that way, right? A girl wants to come back with a Puerto Rican girlfriend, right? She wants to make a friend over there, okay? Let's just keep moving on. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> um, so... Uh, Okay, at this point now, at this point now, it's not working so well. <laughs> so, um, the actual chesed is not even a chesed mitzvah, a chesed mitzvah. Um, as we explained to everybody, the fact that we help non-Jews, it's Hashem, it's wonderful, it's beautiful, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the goals of the program or what they've accomplished. What they've accomplished is here over the kids, as well as the Shiva Kids and Basic Kids. Uh, they make them understand. What do the kids, the kids come back with what? The kids come back with a feeling that they did something very positive Jewish. That they did Tikkun Olam, they did Olagoyim, that they come back 
the, 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 the Kira program, not so much in disguise, not it's not disguise, it's a straight up Kira program. Uh, they take a leadership I role in high school, they become much more involved, they go on to Eric Stahl, they go on to summer programs. One, th uh, one thing's for sure, one thing's for sure, they don't, we have not found till now, th 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 there's all kinds of twelve, we have not found over here that doing it is a mitzvah of chesed for these kids. It's not chesed. No, it's not. Uh, 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 the Rambam brings down his ten different levels of chesed. He doesn't mention non-Jews until the very end. After he finishes the list, he mentions at the end, as we're going to mention in a moment. Um, it's, uh, I don't know, Rabbi Fried, can you take my something uh, for money that you give to non-Jews? Is, is it part of your maiser? But Pashtus not. Right? But Pashtus not. So the bottom line is, is that uh, we still have to figure out, I have two more things that I want to come up with and share with you. The most important thing of all is the Gemara and Gittin Daf Samach Aleph Amad Aleph. It's the Gemara and Gittin, you all learned it at some point in your yeshiva days. Uh, we probably did this in Derech or Sameach. Uh, it's Perak HaSholeh, Perak HaSholeh, Perak HaNizokin. It brings down, um, the Mishnah brings down, there's a thing called Dark Shalom. There's a thing called Dark Shalom. What is Dark The ways of peace. What's the, the example of Dark Shalom? The first example in the Mishnah is Eil Dvarim Amr Mipnei Dark Shalom. This is the, the decrees of Dark Shalom. Kayen Kera Rishon, Va'achrov Levi, Va'achrov Yisrael Mipnei Dark Shalom. We don't want to have problems over here. The Khan goes first, then comes the Levi. So basically, what's called, we have rules of how society is going to be able to function in a healthy way. Okay, that's very beautiful. Um, then comes along the Gemara at the end and says, Tanur this is not the mission anymore, this is the Bryce at the end, and says, Mepharnasim aniyah nachrim im aniyah Yisrael. Together with Jews, you can give parnasa to non-Jews. Mevakrim chayli nachrim, this is what I was looking for when we learned the Gemara in Shabbos. You can do bikacholim with non-Jews together with bikacholim of Jews. And finally, if chas there's a, there's, a, there's an epidemic so you can bury the non-Jews together with the Choli Yisrael. The Rashi explains over there, it doesn't mean together in the same basic forest, but in the same, you know, he, this one goes to the non-Jewish cemetery, this one goes to the Jewish cemetery, but if people are dying, you take care of all of them equally. As everyone in the medical field knows, that when it comes to these things in real life, you don't differentiate. Why? Because of Derek H. Shalom. Now, if I just stop the Gemara over here, so then we'd say, okay, so what is Derek Shalom with non-Jews? because society cannot function otherwise. Now, God forbid, if you can imagine, you start to differentiate between Jew and non-Jews, so there'd be a pogrom. So, ah, so now we've got the reason. The reason why we do chesed missions is to avoid pogroms. Okay, that way, you don't want the goyim to come and attack us, so we say, we're gonna do things for you, so you don't do bad things for us. That's how it seems to come out. But just, just, you should just know, right? It says over here, Mepharnasim Aniyeh Nachrim Im Aniyeh Yisrael. So when I first read this, you see that the Pashup shot over here is that, um, is that when you're doing things for Jews, you can do things for non-Jews as well. But to go out of your way, to go to another end of the world, to cross over the Gulf of Mexico, to go and do things that no one asked you to go there, so that would not necessarily be to Dark Yisholem. But it might mean in, in a door where people see you know, your donations online and they see what, who you helped, so then it, it wouldn't be in. Like in, in the Gemara's example, there's a, a, a Jewish beggar next to a Goyish beggar. You give the Jew, you don't give the guy, that's a dark shalom. So if everyone sees your tax statements, because you're whatever, you're, right. you're a Gvir or you're of Israel, and if you're helping so, a Jew, so you're can, not let, helping let me ask you, Let me ask you a question. If NCSY did a chesed mission, and, and, and in the far corner of the world, and no one knew except for the kids. It was clandestine. They went at night, they fixed up a bunch of houses, and they flew back, no one knew about it. What, is that permitted? Is that dark fundraising? What? Yeah. That would be fundraising. They want to so do it. It's, it's not for the for the donations, it's for the kids. The kids would say, well, you do, you do chesed for Jews, you won't let them So, let me just read to you the words of the Taz. I think basically what you're saying, let me just read to you the words. The, this is, I'm reading now for Shulchan Arach, Yoradea, Kufman Aleph, Yud Beis. Mutter 
So the Tas says that um, it doesn't have to be Imo, it's loved after, right? It's the, the point that, that we're making is, is that it's not a Misa Mitzvah, it's just something you're allowed to do. So this sort of broadens it a little bit, that it's, it's something, so in other words, uh, we may go to Puerto Rico, uh, but it's uh, certainly not like Sukhani because of the Kira thing, and uh, certainly it's possible that we're making a Kiddush Hashem, that going will hate us less over here, but at the end of the day, I still think that it's really lacking a powerful argument as to why would we do it, let's say in a case where there's no PR, where the only thing that benefits is that the kids have done something um, that they feel good about. Um, I want to show that there's a possible third reason that I think is a much more, a much more, um, uh, uh, has much more of a deeper, deeper connection, which goes back to how I started off the whole presentation about the word shalom. There's something else that's missing over this. Let me just summarize so far. <clears throat> Number one is that um, uh, you, you, it's certainly mutter to do these things. Uh, there's no low sechane because there's definitely some form of benefit that's going over here. If there's a benefit of cure, that would be, it's very powerful. But there's also a benefit, like you say, PR, or the benefit that uh, Goyim will hate us less, or the benefit, whatever it is, that uh, some form of a Kiddush Hashem, um, even in your own community, it filters back. Some kind of a positive thing that's got nothing to do with your relationship with the people that you're trying to do chesed with. So all of these things are good things. But what about chesed for a non-Jew on its own. What about if I am wearing a baseball cap and, uh, and uh, they, no one can see that I'm Jewish, which is kind of ridiculous because they can smell that you're Jewish. But let's say I did not look Jewish, or a girl, or a girl who doesn't, doesn't, you can't tell if she's Jewish or not Jewish, she gives money to a non-Jew uh, outside her car, she puts, you know, puts a dollar over there. <coughs> he doesn't know you're Jewish, it doesn't mean anything, so what did you do? You just did pure chesed? And there's no dark shalom whatsoever over here. You're not making Kiddush Hashem. So what is it? You're being mitzvah in your own midos. You become a bigger Baal Chesed, you would do Chesed. Is that a problem? Is that a Chesed? 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 Why can't you, why can't, yeah. Why can't you just say, why can't you just say, I'll give it to, I'll give it to the, to the JSU in St. Louis. You could. Because that's so a better use of your she money. Did. She gave it out the door. It makes you a It's only a salvation. <laughs> And maybe it's nothing. Maybe she just threw away a dollar. It has no effect on. Yeah, a Kurdish bar, Baruch Hu will take care of this we'll, person. We'll undo the, the you happen to be right, right, but you have to you need a better ride than that, Rabbi Ravinsky. Other Mikhail Kapitu also. He's, uh, it, he may not be doing an act, or she may not be doing an act of chesed according to the definition of Torah, but she's doing a Misa that. I don't know. I, I think I, I think I think you're I think you're I think you're stretching the word faceba culture to to an infinity over here. Okay. The mitzvah of chesed, like where do we go to midos from? Like Rav Rav, 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 Okay. So now so now you're talking good. Okay. So now you're talking good. Let's get hold of a second. that. So I'm dochi you, but I'm gonna in a few in a few minutes I'm gonna show you why you're right. But a little bit I need to. Put some in a very, very, very important introduction over here. Um, for those of you who are regular members of the Chabura, so you'll know that sometimes we, we learn together, especially in Machshava, there's what's called a Tam Tachta and a Tam Elyon. Sometimes you see an idea, and Rashi, this is the way he should do it, gives you the Psha, and then the Zoyar, or the Sifri Chasidr, so the Sifri, they, they bring out, there's a higher dimension going on as well. The classic example is something that we learned about a month ago, oh, excuse me, a month ago, four months ago, before I had my accident, the last, the last sugi that we learned in detail was the sugi of Nehra Shabbos. Okay, there's three reasons why we like candles. One of them is called Shalom Bais. What Shalom Bais? Are you there covered? Shalom, what Shalom Bais? Says Rashi, this is Rashi in Shabbos Cafe on the base. He says, Mokam She'ena Ner, a place where there's no light, ain't Shalom. V'hoylech v'nichshav v'hoylech ba'afelo. So that's it. So you don't want to bump into your wife. You bump into your wife, you step on her toes, you've hurt her, okay? You've ruined the whole Shabbos atmosphere. So, or you step on your husband's life, right? It doesn't make a difference, okay? The whole thing is, it, you ruin everything. So Shabbos, Shalom, right? Shabbos is considered a, um, excuse me, Shalom bias means that you, well, I'm so glad Rabbi Free came back. I'm bringing over here 
that uh, but near a Shabbos, the Indian of Shalom Bayis, there's two reasons for it. One is the simple shot, is that the Shalom Bayis is that you don't want to hurt someone. We don't know what it's like to be in pitch black. Is today, Baruch Hashem, with electricity and everything like that. But in those days, when it got dark and you couldn't afford lights, couldn't afford anything, it was pitch black. People used to hurt each other. They would bump into each other. So you need it for what's called Shalom Bayis. Says the Rambam, and the Rambam does not mention that Neir Shabbos is connected to Shalom Bayis anywhere in Hilchas Shabbos. Where does he mention it? Hanukkah. In Hilchas Hanukkah. Okay, this is the very end of Hilchas Hanukkah, which, by the way, is also the very, very end of this whole Ava, the whole section we talked about Yom Tov. Here's how he ends up. He says, "You should know that you like that when you have a choice between spending money on Neir Hanukkah versus Neir of Shabbos, Shabbos." Overrides trumps, and hey, I mean, Dafka overrides Hanukkah. Why? Sherei Hashem Nimchak Lasa Shalom Binishle Ishto. Hashem will dissolve his own name in the Saita woman to bring Shalom between a man and his wife. And then he ends up, God Allah Shalom, Shakala Terakula Nitna Lasa Shalom. Shalom is great because the whole purpose of everything in Terah is to come to this place called Shalom, Shanema. The ways of God are the ways of peace, and all his paths are shalom. When we learned it then, I said, this is a, a, one of my Rebbe Rabbi Shapiro, he mentions again and again and again that the Rambam, even though he may not have formal training in Kabbalah, but it's the Mesilla Shasharim writes that anyone who learns his Amel Batayra, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives them the secrets of Torah as a gift. And again and again and again, dozens of examples in the Mishnah Torah and the Murin Avuchim, you see that he says, he says things that, uh, that he could only be aware in the language that he uses of aware of deep ideas in Kabbalah. Here's a perfect example over here, um, and, and I'm sure I'm just scratching the surface of what's going on over here, but he ends up this whole thing that the Shalom bias of lighting candles over here is connected to the whole great idea of what Shalom is all about. So I'm, I'm not going to go over this in great, 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 great detail, but basically, what does it mean that Shabbos is Shalom? What does it mean that Shabbos is Shalom? So there's a general rule in life, general rule in life. Whenever everyone finds their correct place and everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be, which is what Shalom is all about, the husband is the husband, the wife is the wife, the children are the children, the king is the king, the, the people are the people, and everyone knows exactly what it is, and there's harmony between everyone underneath what is supposed to be the one in charge. So that's when you have Shalom. The simplest example is an orchestra. It's an orchestra. You have the man in the middle, and he says, you are playing the violin this way, and you're playing the harp this way, and you're playing the piano that way, and you're playing the drums this way, and every single person finds their instrument, plays it to perfection in harmony with everyone else, and together, the sound, that is the sound of Shalom. So we explained back then that, uh, that, that the Kla Yisrael and the Kaddish Baruch Hu is always, always the ultimate, I don't know it, what's the marshal and what's the nimshal, but Knesset Yisrael and Kutche Baruch Hu, that is husband and wife. So we say that the Indian of lighting candles on Shabbos is because we want a shalom between ish le ishtoy. That is the tam ha for the tam ha-elyayim, that on Shabbos you have shalom between Kla Yisrael and the Kaddish Baruch Hu. What is Shabbos? As Rabbi Fried mentioned beforehand, is that Shabbos is a taste of Olam Haba. Olam Haba is when finally every single component of creation finds perfect harmony. So every human being, Jew and non-Jew, every the animals and, and the Pirkeshir of the animals, uh, the, every blade of grass and every particle of sand and all the heavenly celestial beings and all the higher worlds are in perfect harmony. That is Olam Haba. Olam Haba is not a place. Olam Abba is Olam Hazer, where everything is B'Shalom. And Shabbos, you can taste a little bit of that Shalom of Lasid Lavi. So it comes out something incredible. Because whenever you have Shalom, you have Refuah. You have healing. What does that mean? So we all made the same mistake when we were little children. Now remember, we're little boys and girls. We go to school, and they, we, we're not, what happened at Har Sinai? At Har Sinai, Akash Baruch Hu says, everyone who's sick becomes healed. Magic wand, okay, okay, this is it. Hermione takes out her wand, everyone is healed. Shkayach, beautiful. Wrong, that's not what happened. The Pasuk first says that Klai Yisrael was ki'ishachad b'levachad. At the mountain, Klai Yisrael created a, 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 a unity 
where every single component of Klai Yisrael was in harmony with each other. Everyone was exactly in the place where they're supposed to be. At that moment then, they tasted a little, little, little um, um, micro taste of Olam Haba. So by definition, everything was healed. My Rebbe Ramesh Shapiro once mentioned that the word for disease really is disease, right? Which means that your body is not in harmony. When he said this, we had a chiropractor in the shir, he almost died from happiness. He said the chiropractor has been saying this forever. That, what is a chiropractor? The idea is if you can move the bones, that everything is, is in perfect harmony, <coughs> so the middle of the rest of the body gets healed. So disease comes to the word disease. It means that the body is not in sync. If every part of the body is the way it's supposed to be, then, then you cannot get sick. So the idea of Shabbos being a time of refor is because Shabbos is a taste of the future world where everything is in sync, and when everything is in sync by definition, so there's no, there's no sickness there at all. So this is incredibly beautiful. It's incredibly beautiful. When it comes to you, you have a friend who's sick on Shabbos. You go, Shabbos he milizai. Okay, this is not a time for crying out now because of a full of lava. We are tasting a little bit of that shalom of that wall to come where everything is in perfect harmony. So in the there's no sickness. In other words, what you're doing for your friend is you're connecting him to this deeper dimension of Shabbos of a world where there's no sick, sickness. sickness. <laughs> what? Right. Oh, wow. Okay, I never heard that before. Shkayach, okay? So then, but now we also understand that Shivna is Yerushalayim. He sees a sick person. The first word he comes in, he says to them, Shalom. After he says, how are you doing? What can I do to help you? All the other things you do at Birka Khan. When he leaves, the last word he says is Shalom. Now he makes Shalom the centerpiece of the whole Birka Cholim enterprise over here. With this, I understand the yoifi, the beauty of the, of the words of the Belzerel. From Army Bells, who was Ish Kaddish Ad Ma'od. He didn't just say Chasidish Shavarts for the sum of it. And, and, and as, as, as Sam mentioned before, and like, uh, hello, we say, Rafi Cholim, it's a Shevach for Kaddish Baruch Hu three times a day. We say it all the time. He's saying, no, the, the Shevach, Rafi Cholim, is identifying that the etzim essence of Shabbos is Rafi Cholim, Umata Asurim. The, 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 the Shevach that we say in the second Baruch of the Shwan Asrei, is, is bringing out the essence of what the day is all about. There you see that Shabbos is a time for Shalom. So Mamela or Refur Kroivalov, it means that there in the second bracha you're already tzushtel and you're connecting yourself to the essence of Shabbos that is Kulei Shalom. So with that, a lot of things can now fall into place. First of all, Shabbos itself, Goyim have no shaykhs to whatsoever. Right? That, that, that is no question. But what about Shabbos loss of lava? The Shabbos Lassad Lava already is complex, right? The Shabbos that we keep once every seven days, even though it's Me'ena Olam Haba, a Goy is not allowed to keep Shabbos. But Shabbos Lassad Lava has a bridge called Yomos HaMashiach. Mashiach is going to come and start to do Tikkunim. And there already it gets complicated. I'm not going to give a whole share about the place of non-Jews on, on, uh, in Yomos HaMashiach and their place in Olam Haba. It is suffice for us to say the following thing, is that we know that uh, on Rosh Hashanah, our tefillos, and the Ramchal talks about this a lot, our tefillos Rosh Hashanah is that HaKash Baruch Hu should bring the chayntin kav, the chayntin pachtacha, the yasa kulam aguda achas, lasa tzun kulay v'sham. It's talking about Jew and non-Jew. What does that mean? So the Ramchal explains that every non-Jew has a mokom in this world, except for Amalek and the Shevis Amin, everyone has their mokom in this world. So what does that mean? Yishmuel has to go back to base of Ram and be what Avram Avinu wanted him to be. That part of Esau that has a tikkun, which is from the neck up, whatever that means, should go back to the house of Yitzhak and find their tikkun. Everything has to find their makom. <laughs> How that works is really not for now. But there is such a concept that in the world of Olam Haba, there is, as the Ramchal explains, and you have a look at Chelek Beis, Perak Dalet, so there he explains exactly how it works with the nations of the world and the world to come. Now I want to show you something incredible. You see, the beauty of the Rambam and how he talks about the mitzvah of chesed with non-Jews. Listen to this. My dear friends, Gal Hashem. Hilchus Malachim. At the very end, he talks about the world of Mashiach. Just before that, 
The line before he talks about what's going to happen when Shia comes, he says the following words. He says, Afilu hagayim, tzivu chachamim Even by Gayim, there's a mitzvah to do bikrachalim, velik bar mersayim, and to bury their dead in Mesi Yisrael with the dead of Israel. Olafarnes aniyem kibichlal ani Yisrael. Why? Mipnei darke shalom. So he says beforehand it's because of darke shalom. And then he adds two things. He adds two things. Why? Shinema, Pasuk number one, as the great Rabbi Ravinsky mentioned from Ashrei, Tev Hashem Lakol V'Rachamov Al Kol Ma'asov. The Kodesh Baruch Hu has Rachim on, on, on Jew and non-Jew alike. Who says it's the Rambam? <coughs> so this is definitely, if you have Rachamim on the nations of the world, so you, I, I don't know, the Tamer Demar does not mention this over here. But the, the Pasuk, the Dovid Melech brings down an Ashri, it says that Kosh Baruch Hu's Rachamim includes the world of the non Jew. What? Ninve is the big Raya. Right? Yeah. Kosh Baruch Hu says at the end of Yoni, it's Yona, why should, and the animals of Ninve, right? Even the animals, right? Yeah, Kosh Baruch is Rachamim in all his creation. Wait a second, wait a second. And then he adds the following words, Venema. And this I did check up on, on, uh, on Google, right? He says the words, This is the only other place that he brings down this Pasuk in the Mishnah Torah. One, he mentions it by the nearest of Shabbos, and the other is by the mitzvah of Darchi Shalom, that And for me, I understand that the Rambam is being Muramez, as we mentioned, beforehand with Neris of Shabbos, that Shabbos is Shalom, that similarly over here, that all the ways of a Kodesh Baruch Hu is ways, is a Kodesh Baruch Hu's ways is Shalom. And when you do an act of chesed for a non-Jew, you do Bikacholim, right? you, you bury their dead, you help them with Parnassah, whatever you do, you're somehow connecting that all roads of life lead, lead to that world of Shalom where everything's in perfect harmony. You're doing a Misa, that somehow is connecting you to the world of Shalom at the end of days. It comes out that, uh, once again, I'm, I'm assuming that the Rambam is making this the same kind of thing, this, uh, what's called Tam Elyon, this deeper, deeper, deeper Alpisaid idea of what Shalom is all about, that the words Darki Shalom doesn't just mean pogrom avoidance. It's not just to avoid that the Goyim shouldn't hate us. We want Goyim to like us. No, there's actually a tikkun that's going on called Darki Shalom, and Darki Shalom means that you're doing a Misa over here that somehow is Merames to the Shalom that's going to be there at the end of days. If I'm, what I'm saying is right, something incredible comes out, and with this I'm going to end. He says, if, if what I'm saying is correct, so how beautiful is the following thought? What's the first words ever said by a Jew on Rosh Hashanah? Anybody know? The first words said by a Jew on Rosh Hashanah. Recorded in the Chumash. What? The first words in Chumash, it's in Sefer Bereshis. Well, a Jew, not Adam Arishon, uh, and, and not Yosef Atzarik in Pashis. Uh, there's, a, there's a story which Chazal say happened on Rosh Hashanah. The four the angels come to visit, three angels come to visit Avram Avinu. They come to visit Avram Avinu. When did it happen? So Chazal say it happened on Rosh Hashanah. What? It's the other Shita. It's always, whenever you have Rosh Hashanah, there's somebody else that says it was Pesach. What? No, so he says, Vayema, Avram Avinu opens his mouth and says, Adoni. So Rashi brings down the second parish. He's talking to Hashem. I, okay, okay. Uh, it says, it says, Avram says, um, If I found favor in your eyes, Don't abandon me. Don't go away. So first of all, this is the most beautiful, powerful thing of what Rosh Hashanah is all about. Every Rosh Hashanah, we say, Kosh Baruch Hu, right? Don't abandon us. Don't go away. Stay here. Stay with us. We need you, Kosh Baruch Hu. But all I wanted to do is add to the following things. Hashem says, the first words of the Jew on Rosh Hashanah that we find in the Chumash is Avram Avinu says to Kosh Baruch Hu, don't go away. So... Why don't, why don't you stay with me, HaKadosh Baruch would say, because I have a mitzvah to do. Chesed What's that mitzvah right. of chesed? Chesed to who? To Bedouins. Okay, as far as I remember, they were, they were, these, were, these were Bedouin, Bedouins are, these were non-Jews. They were, they were there too. 
they were over there, but it's all right, that's why you ask them to wash their feet. But it doesn't make any difference. But you see the Rosh Hashanah, which is a, a taste of what Rosh Hashanah has in it. It's the first day that we ask the Kesh Baruch to bring the world to, to the last day. So we see over here, the Avram Avinu is, is, is doyeg, that Bechol Nesiv says Shalom, that everything should be included, a, a chesed for all the nations of the world. It's a little bit, a little bit, uh, um, um, a little bit, um, uh, what's, what's the word for it? Uh, not 100% emistic what I'm doing, because Avram Avinu was before Matan Torah. Everything switched at Matan Torah. So all these things about Achicha and Klai Yisrael and the uniqueness of Klai Yisrael happened later. Also this Takana Sechamim. The Ark Hashem is Takana Sechamim. Right. So when Chachamim made their Takanas, they had they always had a, a remosim of deeper things. Shal Ner Pashtus Shabbos Kemsos. But the Pashtus that Reisim was Sechanim would have been Aser without the Takana Sechamim Ark Hashem because they're Ozer Vazar and he got nothing out of it. Right. But that was what Mike was saying earlier on. The person is Mechavin for these things. So then it's not Lo Sechanim anymore. You're Mechavan to these things. So in a quick summary, there's three reasons why the Heliger of Eitam is, uh, is doing these, uh, these relief missions. There's three different possible layers over here. The first, and for me, it's the most important by far, is the idea of what we're doing for the kids. As I, I, those of you that remember when Israel had a war for about two weeks, uh, half a year ago, right? So to everyone that I had a Kesha with, I asked you, go out and teach teach your students uh, Israel advocacy. Why? I don't care about the Goyim. I don't care about, about the Goyim on the, the university campus that's going to say, oh, now I get it. No, Israel's not so bad after all. Because it doesn't make a difference. You, every person you flip, there's another 100 people. It doesn't make a difference. Because Baruch was deciding how much anti-Semitism there's going to be, exactly what we need to become who we're supposed to be. But the kids, chas v'shalom, a Jewish child, should think that the Israeli army and, and the Klai Yisrael are, 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 are morally evil. Right, that we need it for them. This is our opportunity to teach them about the godless and the, the greatness of Klai Yisrael. The same thing over here, what Eitan is doing, these kids suddenly they realize <coughs> what it means in the Christ and the idea of giving and the idea of opening your hearts and all the other good things that comes out. So that's level number one. Level number two is what all of you mentioned over here, is that Lemaisa, Ruba de Ruba, there's a Kiddush Hashem that goes on. There's a benefit. There's a benefit that comes out. The people come out as a person, Mr. Hashem, I hope one day to be able to write an article in Mishpacha magazine about this whole thing. I don't know if it's my dream. To be able to, it, it, it is a tremendously, it's there's a yoifi. There's a beauty about what goes on. And thirdly, is that the Rambam is teaching us, that in the Takanas Chazal of Darki Shalom, there's a Tam Tachtoim, which is pogrom avoidance, but there's a Tam Elyoim, that you're Tushcha, you're, you're, you're connecting it to that world of Shalom that we're all waiting for from here via Amazing. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, so with the war called Sukkot Olam and Dr. Shalom. So don't worry, you don't have to cancel all your trips. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.